Jack's grin faded as a sudden explosion rocked the bunker, rattling the walls and sending dust raining down from the ceiling. The turrets outside were firing furiously, but the bounty hunters had brought heavier firepower than expected. You bastards scratched the nice piece of my hidden junk that will certainly bring down the market value, Jack muttered under his breath, glancing at Velixia. How long do you think the defences will hold? Velixia's expression remained cool, though her eyes flickered to the monitor showing the advancing attackers. Long enough to make this interesting. Lyra, still standing by the console, frowned with worry. This isn't the time for interesting. This is the time for not getting vaporized. Even Mr. Fluffles agrees. As their pet stirred on Jack's favorite chair, stretching out, giving a clear nod, Jack gave her a quick grin. Vaporized. Nah. Worst case scenario, we get atomized. Much cleaner. Did your pet just agree with you? Jack slightly distracted by Mr. Fluffles' nod. Velixia clapped her hands together, snapping them both back to the present danger. We don't have time for this, the orb. We need to make a decision. Jack turned back to the screen. The bounty hunters were closing in, and the drones outside were holding their ground, but not for much longer. Already, one of the defense turrets had stopped firing, its barrel smoking ominously. All right. Jack said, rubbing the back of his neck. Let's use the orb as a decoy, like I said. Maybe if we... Wait, Velixia interrupted, pacing now, her mind clearly racing. We're missing something. If this really is the stasis orb from the old legends, it's not just a weapon. It's a key. Jack frowned. A key to what? To everything, Velixia replied, her voice dropping to a near whisper. According to the stories, this orb isn't just a piece of tech. It's a remnant from the time engineers, the ones who built the first stargates, who bent time and space like it was child's play. They left artifacts behind. Some were rumored to be capable of reshaping reality itself. Jack blinked. You're saying this thing could do more than just freeze time? This explains a lot? The extra need to have it? How they know so much about the old days of the Federation? If we figure out how to use it properly, and yes, nothing like ultimate power, what will they be willing to do to get the orb? Velixia's eyes lit up with a sudden intensity. It could do anything. It might even help us escape. Permanently. Lyra, who had been silent up until this point, stepped forward, her face pale. You're talking about manipulating time. That's... That's insane. We don't even know how it works. Exactly, Velixia said, her voice rising. That's why we need to be careful, but if we play it right, we won't just slow them down. We'll leave them stuck in a loop, chasing us forever while we're long gone, well, in theory, anyway. Jack's eyes widened. Now that sounds like a plan. Velixia's gaze shifted to the orb which sat innocuously on a pedestal in the corner of the room, glowing faintly with an otherworldly light. We just need to figure out how to activate it without, you know, triggering an accidental time implosion beam so we don't have to leave the orb behind. That's the spirit, Jack said, rolling up his sleeves. Nothing motivates me like the threat of an existential catastrophe. Lyra sighed, exasperated. You two are impossible. Why do adults talk like this? Another explosion rocked the bunker and the lights flickered. Velixia rushed to the console, her fingers flying across the controls. They're getting closer. We're running out of time. Jack smirked. Not if we use the orb. Velixia shot him a sharp look. We don't know how to use the orb. Well, I'm guessing it's not as simple as pressing a big red button labeled Save the Day. Jack quipped, moving over to the orb, inspecting it with a mix of curiosity and caution. But, you know, I've seen a lot of weird ancient tech in my time. Maybe this thing's got an instruction manual hidden somewhere. Lyra glanced nervously at the screen, where the bounty hunters were now within a few hundred meters of the bunker. Maybe we should stick to the decoy plan. At least we know that might slow them down. 
Or, Jack said, his voice suddenly serious, we go all in. If this thing really is what Velixia says it is, we could leave them stuck chasing shadows for a while in a loop. We just need to figure out how to use it. Velixia stared at the orb, her mind racing. There's something, something in the old texts about harmonic resonance. The engineers used sound frequencies to manipulate time. Great, Jack said, clapping his hands together. So we just need to find the right note and hum it at the orb? Velixia shot him a look. It's not that simple, Jack. If only we knew the correct frequency. Velixia voice sounding a bit stressed. The corridor rumbled again, this time more violently, as the bounty hunters began breaching the bunker's main doors. Jack, Velixia, and Lyra hustled through the last stretch toward the hidden hatch that led to the hangar bay. Jack was still clutching the stasis orb, its surface cool and smooth, but something was wrong. I don't get it, Jack muttered, fiddling with his data pad while they ran. It should have triggered by now. The proximity failsafe was set. Maybe it's a glitch. Maybe you did miscalculate, Velixia said, her voice edged with tension. Not helping, Jack shot back, his fingers now moving frantically over the orb's control interface. The ancient patterns etched into its surface seemed to shimmer and shift under his touch. But no matter what combination he tried, the orb wouldn't activate. Nothing, not even a flicker of energy. The clanging of metal echoed from behind them. The bounty hunters were inside the bunker now. They had minutes, maybe less. This is bad, Lyra said, her usually calm voice carrying an undercurrent of panic. We're out of time. Just give me a second. Jack's voice was strained with frustration. He tried another sequence, but the orb remained stubbornly inert. Come on, you stupid piece of... And then out of nowhere, a soft, melodic meow echoed through the corridor. All three of them paused, looking toward the source of the sound. It was Mr. Fluffles, the small, greyish-blue alien cat with three eyes and three tails and a body of marshmallow who had been hiding somewhere in the bunker during the chaos, casually sauntered out from a shadowy corner. His eyes, glowing faintly in the dim light, locked onto the stasis orb in Jack's hands. Mr. Fluffles let out another soft, soothing meow, a sound that seemed to reverberate through the air, almost harmonizing with the quiet hum of the orb. Before anyone could react, the orb pulsed. A sudden surge of energy rippled out from its core, a brilliant beam of temporal energy shooting forth like a lance of light. The beam arced down the hallway, right toward the advancing bounty hunters. For a moment, time itself seemed to warp. The air shimmered, and the bounty hunters froze mid-stride. Their movements became sluggish, their outlines blurring as they were caught in the temporal field. The beam twisted around them like a living thing, warping time in localized pockets. Some of the hunters were caught in loops, their bodies repeating the same motion over and over again, stepping forward, raising their weapons, then flickering back to their original positions. Others were frozen entirely, suspended in a strange, shimmering stasis. Velixia's eyes widened. How? Lyra blinked, looking down at Mr. Fluffles, who was now sitting calmly at Jack's feet, gazing up at the orb with a contented expression, as if this was all perfectly normal. Did the cat just... Lyra began, but words failed her. Yeah, Jack said, his voice a mix of awe and bewilderment. The cat just activated the orb. Velixia shook her head in disbelief. You're telling me we've been trying to figure out this ancient alien tech for hours, and all it took was a meow. Jack looked down at Mr. Fluffles, who was now purring softly, his tail twitching lazily. I mean, he is a pretty special cat. We can discuss the metaphysical implications of your cat later, Velixia snapped, pulling them back to reality. We've got a window. Let's move. Right. Jack slipped the orb into his satchel, giving Mr. Fluffles a quick scratch behind the ears. Good job, buddy. Mr. Fluffles meowed again, as if accepting the praise, and then trotted ahead of them, leading the way toward the hangar bay. They sprinted down the final corridor, the sound of temporal distortions still echoing behind them. 
Whatever Mr. Fluffles had done, it wouldn't hold the bounty hunters forever. But it had bought them precious time. Jack felt his heart racing as they reached the hangar bay doors. He slammed his hand against the control panel, and the massive doors slid open to reveal his pride and joy. The Rust Bucket. The name might have been a bit of an understatement. The ship looked like it had been cobbled together from half a dozen different models, with mismatched panels and scorch marks from previous hasty escapes. But it was fast. Faster than anything else in this sector. Get in, Jack shouted, rushing toward the ship. Valixia and Lyra were right behind him, with Mr. Fluffles casually padding along as if they weren't in the middle of a life-or-death chase. As they climbed aboard, Mr. Fluffles headed straight for the captain's seat, with Jack letting sigh. Not again, you strange alien cat. What's the deal with you stealing my chairs? Jack moving Mr. Fluffles so he could actually fly the ship. Jack immediately sat in the cockpit, his heart pounding in sync with the rhythmic thud of his boots on the metal floor. Valixia and Lyra followed close behind, with Mr. Fluffles taking his sweet time as though the entire universe wasn't collapsing around them, Jack starting flipping switches and pushing buttons with practiced ease. The ship's old systems hummed to life, the familiar sound filling the cockpit. The control panels flickered briefly. The rust bucket was temperamental at best, but Jack knew her quirks as well as his own. Valixia slid into the co-pilot seat beside him, her eyes scanning the external sensors. They're still stuck in the temporal loop, but it's starting to break down. We've got maybe a couple of minutes before they're free. I only need one, Jack replied, with that reckless grin of his. He hit the ignition and the ship's engines roared to life, shaking the entire hangar. Hold on to something! Lyra, already strapping herself into the jump seat behind them, looked down at Mr. Fluffles, who was now sitting on the console, staring serenely out the viewport. How is he so calm? Lyra muttered under her breath. He just activated an ancient piece of alien tech with a meow. Fluffles is an enigma, Jack said, glancing at the cat. I stopped questioning it after I found him in a cargo hold that hadn't been opened in ten years. Valixia shot him a look. You really think this is the time for... Not the time. Jack cut her off, slamming the throttle forward. The ship lurched violently, the hangar doors parting just in time as the rust bucket rocketed forward, blasting out into the open sky. Behind them, the bunker and the surrounding landscape became a blur. Jack's hands flew over the controls, coaxing every ounce of speed out of the ship's battered engines. He glanced at the rear-view display, which showed the distortion field from the stasis orb beginning to waver. The bounty hunters wouldn't be stuck for long. Any idea who these guys are? Lyra's voice was tight with tension as she peered at the radar, which was now lighting up with signals. They've got ships too. They're launching. Valixia's gaze darkened as she leaned back in her seat, her brow furrowed in thought. Whoever they are, they're not just standard mercs. They're too well organized, too well funded. This whole operation isn't just about capturing us. It's about that orb. Someone very powerful is pulling the strings, and they want that orb badly. Jack's stomach twisted. Well, I'm not giving it to them. He glanced at the stasis orb in his satchel, which was sitting harmlessly beside Mr. Fluffles. The cat was now grooming himself, as if nothing out of the ordinary had just happened. I still don't understand how Fluffles activated it, Lyra said, shaking her head in disbelief. We've been trying for hours and he just meows. Maybe it responds to innocence, Valixia said dryly, watching the cat with narrowed eyes. Or maybe it's something else entirely. That orb is ancient tech, older than anything we've ever come across. There's no telling what kind of intelligence is behind it. Whatever it is, it saved our hides back there, Jack said, banking the ship hard to the right as the first of the bounty hunter ships appeared on the radar. But now we've got bigger problems. The enemy ships were fast, sleek, and clearly designed for pursuit. Jack could tell just from the way they moved that they were newer models, 
far more advanced than the rust bucket in every way that mattered. He gritted his teeth, his mind racing. Outrunning them was going to be tough. Outgunning them? Impossible. How many ships are we talking? Felixia asked, her fingers dancing over the weapons console. Four, maybe five, Lyra replied. They're closing fast. Great, Jack muttered, his hands tightening on the controls. We've got a flying junk heap, a stasis orb that only works when my cat feels like it, and we're up against a fleet of high-tech death machines. Valixia shot him a look, her calm exterior masking the storm of thoughts clearly going on behind her eyes. We've been in worse situations. Have we? Jack shot back, his tone incredulous, because I'm trying to think of one, and I'm coming up short, I'm not sure what things you are into, lady, but nothing as bad as this. Before Valixia could respond, the ship's comm system crackled, and then a cold, mechanical voice filled the cockpit. Unidentified vessel, power down your engines and surrender the stasis orb. You cannot escape. Jack's knuckles whitened on the controls, but it was Velixia who froze, recognition flashing in her eyes. That voice. It wasn't just some hired mercenary. It was sharper, more deliberate, and laced with an unnerving familiarity. Vel, you know these guys? Jack asked, his voice tight with tension. Velixia didn't answer immediately. Her gaze was locked on the radar, where the enemy ships were rapidly closing the gap. There was something about the precision of their formation, the way they moved in perfect synchronization. It was too well-coordinated, too professional. Then it hit her. They're from my home world, she said quietly, her voice strained. The insignia on the lead ship. It's the house of Axion. Jack blinked. Your family? No, Valixia said, her voice turning cold. Not my family, the uprising. Lyra, who had been monitoring the radar, turned sharply. The uprising? But I thought they were crushed years ago. Valixia's expression darkened. So did we all. My father, the king, banished the leaders of the rebellion after the last civil war. The House of Axion was at the center of it. They were stripped of their titles, their lands, everything. But it seems they've been planning their revenge ever since. Jack cursed under his breath. So this whole thing, these bounty hunters, the orb, they're all tied to your past? Valixia nodded, her eyes narrowing as pieces of the puzzle began falling into place. The stasis orb must be part of their endgame. If they can control time, they can rewrite history. They could undo their banishment or worse, take the throne by force. And now they're after you. Jack muttered, eyes flicking from the radar to the controls. Great, just great. The comm crackled again, and the voice returned, colder this time. Princess Valixia, the voice sneered. I know you're listening. You know who I am, and you know why we're here. This doesn't have to end badly. Surrender the orb, and we'll let your friends live. Valixia's fists clenched. Reiner Axion, she spat, the name venomous on her lips. I should have known. Jack glanced at her. Reiner. The eldest son of the House of Axion, Belixia explained, her voice tight. He's been nursing a grudge against my family ever since the uprising was put down. Looks like he's finally made his move. And he's got an armada at his disposal, Jack said grimly. What do we do? Valixia turned to Lyra, then at Mr. Fluffles, who had settled comfortably on the console, licking his paws, completely unbothered by the chaos around him. She bit her lip, her mind racing. They couldn't outrun the Axion ships, and they certainly couldn't outfight them. The only thing they had was the orb and Mr. Fluffles. An idea began to form. It was risky, maybe even insane, but it was their only shot. Jack. Valixia said, her voice steady despite the tension. I need you to take us into open space. We're going to use the orb. Jack's eyes widened. You're serious? You want to use the orb to jump us out of here? Valixia nodded. There's no other way. The Axians won't stop until they have it, and we can't let them get their hands on it. 
If we can use it to jump to another timeline, or even just another part of the galaxy, we might be able to regroup and figure out a plan. Lyra glanced nervously at Mr. Fluffles. But we don't even know how it works. It barely activated last time, and only because of... Valixia looked directly at the cat, her eyes filled with a mixture of hope and desperation. Mr. Fluffles, she said softly, crouching down to meet the cat's gaze. I don't know how you did it, but we need your help again. Can you use the orb to take us somewhere safe, another timeline, another place, anywhere but here? Mr. Fluffles paused in his grooming, his luminous eyes meeting Velixia's. He blinked once, slowly, as if considering the request. Then, with a flick of his tail, he let out that same soft, soothing meow that had activated the orb before. The stasis orb, still resting in Jack's satchel, activated, and with a bright flash, they found themselves on a tropical island paradise with the most beautiful views, everyone looking around, unsure exactly where they had ended up. But for now it was a lot better than what they were facing moments earlier, everyone so thankful, knelt down and gave Mr. Fluffles and big hug, Jack saying, that is one lucky pet you two have. Velixia and Lyra gave each other a glance and laughed. Actually, Jack, he was curled up under your market stall, sleeping until the action started with the bounty hunters. He took a liking to Lyra, so we called him Mr. Fluffles, Velixia said with a chuckle, Jack wide-eyed as ever. You mean he was under my feet the whole time? Who are you, Mr. Fluffles? Jack now locking eyes with him, who gave a wink, then ran off, playing in the sand at the beach.